this in this chat. What's up, everybody? Hi. Shalom. This is Michael with Punk Torah. This is Patrick and here's with Punk Patrick Torah. With Punk Torah. And this is uh, the first in a uh, series of three weekly afternoon prayer services that we'll be holding streaming uh, through Ustream. And you can find the links on Facebook. And you can also go to punctora.org, click on services, and you'll be able to follow it, uh, follow it there. And another thing you can do is that we have chat open on Facebook. That's right. the Punctora Torah Facebook. And then also to the right of the screen, you're going to see the Ustream uh, chat window. So if you want to chat during the service, if you want to ask questions, whatever stuff we can you know, do, Go for it. That's Feel right. free to interrupt. Well, probably it's probably going to be around this time. Yeah, pretty much. About we'll post it between two and what two thirty. Yeah, that's Eastern time, so right. it'll be around noon um, uh, West Coast time. But we'll post the times uh, every day in the morning that we're going to have the afternoon service. So you'll know. Just make sure to friend us on Facebook so that uh, you'll know what's going on. Right, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And today is Wednesday. Wednesday. So today, if you haven't checked it out already, go to punctor.org and read and watch the Bar Torah for the day. Yep. Parsha Pinkas. Yep. Pinkas. 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 You gotta get that high noise in there. That's the first thing you gotta learn. So today we're going to be uh, we're gonna have the Mika service, right? Afternoon service, short service, and then maybe a little discussion. Yeah, and this is the service that you're going to find on 3xdaily.org. So if you go on 3xdaily, click on uh, prayers, and then go to Mincha. Afternoon service. Looks like a Mincha. Yeah, Mincha. Click on there, and you can follow along. Otherwise, you can also get a copy of the India Yeshiva Pocket Sador. Uh, just email us and uh, we will get you a copy of the Sador. That's right. So that's what we're going to be using probably regularly. We might switch it up a little bit, a little variety, so we'll yep. let you know. Okay. But um, so we're going to start with the afternoon service here. The afternoon service is the, uh, the time that lets us come, get together and stop in the middle of our day and create what Reb Zalman would call a Shabbat in time. So we're taking the time now to stop and catch our breath, relax, put the work that we've done behind us, and not worry about the work that we have to do ahead of us, but focus on now. We're going to say a few prayers and, um, and connect, take a moment to connect. So we're going to start with the afternoon service if you have the Indi Yeshiva Pocket Siddur B page 21. and. Uh, <clears throat> a psalm before the verses of praise, a song for the dedication of your people. I praise you, El Shaddai, for lifting me up above my enemies. Adonai Rapha, the Lord that heals, I called to you and you healed me. You kept my soul from destruction and preserved me from darkness. Sing to Melech HaMelechim, the King of Kings, and praise the name. Your anger is brief, but your love lasts forever. The night may bring weeping, but the dawn will bring peace. When everything was good in my life, I felt strong because you made me strong. 
But when I couldn't feel you, I was terrified. I pleaded with the Lord, what good would my death be? How can I honor and praise you if I am dead? Be compassionate to me and help me. You turned my sadness into dancing. You have taken away my darkness and dressed me in light, so that my soul will praise you eternally. But in I, I will praise you forever. Amen. May your name be great and holy in the world which you have made in your way. May the, president, the presence of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the Holy One, blessed is He, be over you in your life and the lifetime of your people. Amen. Amen. May the Lord be with bless us forever. The greatness of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the Holy One, blessed is He, is beyond all words. Blessed is the Lord. Amen. For those who choose to be chosen, for students and teachers of Torah, here or anywhere, may we all have lessons. Amen. Amen. May we all have peace and life. Amen. Amen. We move now into the Amidah. And we just had a person ask, I think we need one more for a minion. Well, I think, I don't know how many people we have up right now. Let's so check. let's check. So we got two here. I don't know how many you have on your end. Uh, Shamish, Shamish Music. Uh, I don't know how many people you've got on your end. Let's check on Facebook real quick and see if we've got enough. Seven for, viewers. We've got seven viewers, okay. My okay, Hava says my son is here too, so I guess that means all right. All right, so we're we're done. Great, so we've got whoops, sorry. Oh, so we've awesome. got enough. We've got okay. ten. That's awesome. Thank Not you. Not bad for a first try. Awesome. Okay. So now we're going to move to the Amidah, which is the center of the prayers. The Amidah. I'm grateful to you, protector of all. Our God and God of our ancestors, Elohei Abraham, Elohei Sarah, Elohei Yitzhak, Elohei Rivka, Elohei Yaakov, Elohei Leah, Elohei Rachel. Adan Allah, master of the world who created goodness, who inspires us to repair the world in compassion, king, queen, savior, and shield, blessed are you, shield of the patriarchs, shield of the matriarchs, and of us all. Adan Allah, master of the world, give us knowledge. After giving us knowledge, accept our repentance. After accepting our repentance, forgive us our shortcomings. After forgiving us our shortcomings, redeem us. After redeeming us, heal us. After healing us, bless our lives. After blessing our lives, bring us together. After bringing us together, judge us fairly. After judging us fairly, defeat the evil in us. After defeating our evil, strengthen our inclination to do good. Now that we are holy before you, make the earth heavenly for us. Hear our prayers and make us worthy of your goodness. Baruch Atah Adonai Ha'el HaKadosh. Blessed are you, Lord our God, the Holy God. Baruch Atah Adonai Ha'el HaKadosh. Blessed are you, Lord our God, the Holy God. Amen. Amen. Baruch Atah Adonai Oseh HaShalom. Blessed are you, Lord our God, who makes peace. Baruch Atah Adonai Oseh Shalom. Blessed are you, Lord our God, who makes peace. Baruch Atah Adonai Shomei Tefillah. Blessed are you, Lord our God, who hears our prayer. Baruch Atah Adonai Shomei Tefillah. Blessed are you, Lord our God, who hears our prayers. Amen. Amen. Very cool. Awesome. Awesome. So that's our shortened uh, service. That took us like, what, three minutes? So now we can engage in just some Torah talk. Yeah. We can just talk about what's going on. So we have a Devar Torah <laughs> up, like Michael mentioned. So if you go on the Facebook or you go on punktorah.org, you're going to find it. Um, I think we uh, have people who are also chatting on Facebook. So if you're on Facebook, I'm going to try to get on Facebook here and Michael is going to kind of watch the Ustream, so let us know that you're involved in talking, and let's all introduce ourselves, sure. and like let everyone know who is who. Uh, I'm Patrick, I'm the Executive Director of Punk Torah. I'm Michael, Creative Director, and so, uh, Alterna Rebbe. Alterna Rebbe. So. Um, let me pull all this up real quick, and we'll see if anyone is on Facebook that is chatting with us. If anybody's got anything they want to talk about, bring up about the Torah portion this week or any questions, um, pop it up on the chat room and let us know. We'd be happy to discuss. That's why just, we're here. Yep, yeah, I'm going to go on ahead and pull this up real quick and say who might want to talk. Talk with us about this week's Torah portion. All right, cool. The miracle of modern technology. That's right. Chat with us on Facebook. Cool. 
All right. So, hi, Stephanie, and your cat, <laughs> your kid and your cat. How old is your, your son? I'm curious. I've got a soon-to-be three-year-old at home, and uh, ten. ten. Awesome. Awesome. That's Very great. Cool. Very cool. Um, you know, I wanted to mention something uh, minionish. Right. When we had discussion about right. this before. Right. Can you do? Does it count as a minion if it's on the internet? What's What's your thoughts? Does Does it count if it's a, a minion? If it's on the internet. Right. Because one of the things that, that I've heard um, through Talmud study and, and some uh, other smarter people than me, <laughs> <laughs> of which there are many, that there are there are rulings in the Talmud which stated at the time, right, if you had people, right, who were engaged in prayer or service inside the temple wall, right, and there was another Jew outside the temple wall who walked by, right, that would be considered. A minion. They would count because there's a chance that they would because hear. they would have heard it. Even if they weren't participating, if there's another Jew in within earshot, right. that counts. Interesting. So that would translate to the internet, right? You know, the computers are our walls, right? And if you're participating, right, then that counts. So very cool. So let's see who's saying so. Shemesh, uh, it's not even afternoon here. So what? Where is it? Where you are? Where, where are you? It's a. Uh, it's two thirty our yeah. time. So I'd be curious to know where you are. Where where anybody is. Right. Um, and, and Saba, then, I couldn't agree more. She says I think that the purpose is to unite hearts in prayer. Yeah. I don't think people need to be in the same room for that. Right. That's and very I agree. Cool. That's very cool. It's yeah. all intention. Yeah. Us being together. Right. Even virtually. Right. Yeah, you know, um, and that's it's nine thirty here. Oh, oh, so, oh we got oh. someone in Israel. That's great. Hello, hello, hello from the diaspora. Shalom. Yeah. yeah, shalom. Is it? That's very cool. <laughs> yeah, that's, awesome. That's great. It's a time change. That is a time change. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks for logging on. Yeah, that's thank awesome. you. We appreciate it. Detroit. We're awesome. in Detroit. Yeah, okay, we were cool. just in Chicago. Yeah, and we're going to be back in Chicago, uh, July. 18, awesome. 19, yeah. we're yeah. going to be hanging out, so that's cool. Try it right on. That's not too far. <laughs> Motor City. Yeah, there's no reason we can't pray together, even if it's not one of the three daily prayers. Oh, there you go. There you go. That's, that's even right. better. Right, because, you, you know, why not? What's What what harm does prayer cause? Right. You know what I mean? That's an interesting well, question. unless you, know? you pray for something. Unless you pray for something <laughs> bad to happen. Right, right. Something bad might happen. Right, right. 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 No, that's a great point, you know, especially like, the, the whole idea of the three daily prayers is is to um, em, emulate in a way the um, traditional right sacrifices or order in the temple right right but we don't have that anymore so what why can't we just do it it's actually it's allowed. actually allowed awesome yeah there you go right. very cool this is great this is awesome hey uh, Hava quick question since you have the uh, the ten-year-old is the ten-year-old uh, engaged in what's going on right now, or is uh, let's see, he or she running around somewhere? I'm just curious. Uh, Shemesh says, ah. like if someone made, made Shabbos, Shabbos early, early and they're davening Ma'ariv. Okay, yeah, very sense. cool. Someone else can daven Micha with them. Okay, so there you go. So, you know, this is a very experimental thing that we're doing right now. Literally, I think we decided to do this like 10 minutes ago. So, uh, yeah. you know, I think, you know, y'all, as we say, I'm a southerner, <laughs> y'all, you can tell. I'm a transplant. He's a transplant. Southern, so. um, I mean, you know, we're going to be working on this and really developing it and um, with your help. Hava says, he's sitting here watching with me. He doesn't like to have oh. to pray in Hebrew, but he's interested in the conversation, and he wanted me to mention our cat. Cool. Uh, okay. What's the cat's name? Yeah, what's the cat's name? And yeah. is the cat Jewish? Right. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. Like, uh, my sister's dog is Dr. Fleischman. <laughs> nice. So we know he's Jewish. We know that the cat... The my I used to have, dog is Jewish. I used to have a cat named Murray Lowenstein. Oh. Ha yeah. Hannah and yes. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Well, awesome. um... That's interesting that he doesn't like to have to pray in Hebrew. You don't have to pray in Hebrew. God understands all languages. Hebrew has been seen to be a holy language. Right. And if you can, you should. But yeah. 
God, it's not like God won't understand you. And I'd be curious, Shemesh, since you're in uh, Israel, how you feel about that. I'd also be curious to know if you're Israeli or, um, you know, if you're... Uh, Aliyah, uh, yeah, if you made Aliyah. I'd be curious to, to know your story. Um, but yeah, I mean, I agree that there are certain things, and we threw in Hebrew, especially the names of God and all that, but... Uh, well, it's important to have that connection, because it is an important right. language, both secularly and religiously. Right, and religiously. So, yeah. it's important to have a connection, but... Very cool. You know, when it comes down to it, right. that's what it is. Very cool, very cool. I oh, made awesome. Aliyah in 2007. Mazel. Very cool, Mazel Tov, Mazel Tov. Um, Okay, awesome. Well, so... Um, what does everyone want to talk about? We, we honestly don't even know what we were going to discuss, so I'm yeah, curious. We already did the video for the Devar Torah, and we don't want to take away from that if you guys want to watch If you guys want to watch that, or we can talk about it, or if you want to... Part of why he doesn't like, like it is because he's still just learning, but he's nodding along that he knows God understands him in any language. Good That's point. Great. And also a good point, uh, Shemesh is davening in Hebrew. is just awesome because I can walk into a shul anywhere in the world right. and daven with them. That's important. It's a, it's another one of the unifiers of right. the Jewish people. I had an experience with that the other day. Uh, I'm getting in. I'm engaged. I'm getting married, and uh, my fiance and I are thinking about going to Argentina for Hanukkah. And she speaks a little bit of Spanish. I I took two years of Spanish in high school, and I don't remember any of it. I just I didn't care. There were cute, <laughs> honestly, there were cute girls in my class, and I wasn't focused on on learning how to speak the language like I should have, but, um, you know, the, the Hebrew is the unify. Oh, I, th I hope the Mazel Tov is for me getting married and not for not being able to learn <laughs> Spanish because I was looking at girls in my class. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, so that's a unifier, you know, the fact that we can go uh, down to Buenos Aires where we're going on our honeymoon and, um, you know, there will instantly be that connection, and it's part of why... I learned apparently Argentina has this gigantic uh, Jewish population that that's part of why it works, you know. Right. Um, you know. Oh, Paige is on. Oh, hi Paige. How are you doing? Um, that's so cool. Um, so we've got about... Uh, yeah, so now we've got 16 people. 16 people on here. So we, might we, will, we might have to Davin We might have to Davin Marov again or something. We will probably do Minka again. All right, yeah, Minka, excuse me, yeah. My son says he understands what you mean because there's a girl in his Hebrew class that has a crush on him. Yeah, that'll happen. Yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah, that's never going to go away. Let let him know that now. That's, well, once... That's, uh, well, yeah. Uh, once, once you get married. Once you get married. Maybe once you find the one. Then the blinders. Sure, then, then, yeah. They're not blinders. <laughs> it's not blinders. It's just... One light gets really bright and the and rest get really dim. Get really you, don't even, you don't even look at the rest. Right, right. Anyway, cool. That's awesome. My wife's not here. Yeah, yeah. Luckily, my, my fiance is no, out no, of no. town, so we can we can talk, we can joke about all that right. stuff. But um, that's that's funny. I'm glad to know that things don't change. You know, <laughs> I'm almost 28 years old, and you know, I'm glad yeah, to know yeah. that things have stayed the same. You old man. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Well. Um, so you know, why don't we just go on ahead and talk about the Torah portion yeah, for this week? Okay. That might be kind of cool. Um, so Parsha Pinchas. Pinchas. Yes. What happens this week? Let's see. So um, Pinchas is interesting because something that happens a lot, and I'd be change. Yeah, change happens a lot mm -hmm. in this. Um, Somebody's watching. Someone's watching <laughs> those punk Torah videos. Um, yeah, so the Torah is interesting with how it gives um, sort of titles to Torah portions because Pinchas actually doesn't take part in this very much. Right. Um, there's kind of two big stories in here. The first one is uh, Zelochet, and he is the uh, father of five daughters, and all we know about him is that he dies. And uh, He died, apparently, of um, Korah. Yeah. But he wasn't part of the rebellion. Right, right. So going, yeah, going back slightly, there was a rebellion uh, by a guy named Korach, and so... Luke uh, Skywalker, oh wait. Yeah. <laughs> dun, da -da -dun, da -da -dun, da -dun. No, it's... Different story. Different story. Uh, anyway, so um, so this, this guy dies, and he leaves behind his uh, daughters. Now, 
that doesn't seem like anything important, but back in those days, not having a son to pass on your inheritance to was a big deal. So the daughters aren't by law at this point in the story, aren't able to get their father's inheritance, and they get angry about it. And so they go to Moses, and they say, Moses, this is unjust. Why should our father's name, why should our father's um, uh, lot, I guess, uh, be uh, taken away from us, taken away from his family, and by family meaning descendants. And um, so Moses says, okay, that makes some sense. I'm going to go talk to God about it. So they talk. So Moses goes and talks to God, and God agrees. And God says, you're right, that's, that's perfectly fair. So the law of inheritance was written that said that if you didn't have sons, it goes to daughters. If, it doesn't, if you don't have daughters, then it's going to go to brothers, etc., etc., etc. So, you know, that's a really interesting thing because basically the law changes. God changes the law to meet a, you know, morally correct need. And this happens a lot in the Torah. Um, ah, had to sign up to comment. Thanks for doing this. Oh, oh awesome. hey, Douglas. How's Good. it going, man? Awesome Thank to you. see you. Um, so, uh, anyway, as I was saying, um, you know, the law here changes. And this is kind of a, a crazy, interesting idea because I think a lot of times we're used to the idea of law being static, that it's a thing that maybe we can interpret it one way or the other, but it's, it's a static thing. And there's a whole history in the Torah of um, people arguing with God and trying to, um, you know, bring up these issues to God of what's right and what's wrong. God gets called out a lot. And um, there's even a play, a really famous play, where um, a bet din forms at the Holocaust and they put God on trial. Uh, for this sense of moral justice. So that's a whole lot of info you didn't need. But that's basically what happens with the daughters. The second part that happens, which is a little bit smaller, is um, it's, it's still a big deal, but it takes up less of the, of the story, is um, Moses can't go into the promised land. So a new leader has to rise, and God picks Joshua. And there's this ceremony that happens where Moses lays his hands on Joshua and uh, sort of does the, you know, booga 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 thing, yeah, and, uh, you know, he's, he's the leader. He transfers authority the authority to... over. Right. Um, so that's really great. Let's talk about some of these comments real quick. That yeah, are... you know what, and, and um, you bring up some good points, everybody. Um, yeah. Shemesh says we need Moses to talk to God about some other issues nowadays, too. Yeah. That's exactly true. That's very true. Well, and I think that that fits into what the end of the portion of is saying, right. along with Paige, says it's a good thing we change as our spirituality evolves. So did we as a nation, and it's like a child arguing with his parents. I agree. Yeah. And the thing is, we have um, this this whole end, this whole transfer of power, right? This transfer of authority, right? Shows that God recognizes it's time right. for a change in leadership. Right. Moses can't lead forever, and he picks, you know, right. Joshua out of everyone. He says this guy. So he knows what Joshua's capable of and what he can do. Right. So it's saying, it's God saying, if I wanted you to live the same way in the desert forever, it would be the same way in the desert forever and most of you would be here. Right. But it's not the case. We need to grow and, and live and to do that you need new leadership. So I understand that, that, that times call for new ideas. It doesn't mean we have to change anything. Right. Like, uh, how, you see, how do we determine what laws can or should be changed today? Um, reform leaders, reform Jews get a bad rap for being too lenient, but a lot of laws need to change. So who decides? Well, that's an interesting question because we get that a lot. Right. People are like, who is your rabbi? Right. And Punk Torah as an organization doesn't have a rabbi. Right. Um, you know, we're, we don't work that way. We're, it's a little bit different. And so this idea of decentralizing authority Right. in a modern time is really it's an interesting right. issue and it's you know it's a conversation that we need to keep having all of the time definitely the point is that uh, you, you needed a rabbi before because he had all of the knowledge and learning that you didn't have right but now like he was the Jewish Wikipedia yeah and yeah. you'd go to them but now you have Wikipedia right if you have a question about just 
knowledge, you go to Google, right? Right. So what's the role of a rabbi? And is it to tell you what to do to interpret halakha for you? Right. Or is it right. your job? Right. As a as a, a as a, a Jew to understand with the mind and the decision making skills that God gave you. Right. right. So one thing, uh, one quote about halakha that I think is applicable that I wanted to share is by. Uh, I'm going to jump on our Facebook one. Yeah, on that. it's by Rabbi Mo uh, Moises Isserlis of Krakow, known as the Rama, who lived from 1525 to 1572. And he says, in regards to making a halakhic decision, where something new has arisen that was unknown to earlier sages, such as that there is a reason to fear ruination or the violation, the violation of a prohibition, a fear that could not have existed in previous generations, it is certainly permissible to enact a rule, like all the enactments stated in the Talmud, because one can say that the earlier generations did not establish the prohibition with that situation in mind. So what's that, what's that mean? That means that A, a uh, prominent, extremely prominent rabbi from the Orthodox times is telling us that halakha can change, that the Talmud itself is mutable, and that as things come up, we have to address them as we are today, not as they would have 3,000 years ago. Let's uh, look at some of the comments that we have here, because there's lots of great stuff. So, Shemesh, you're making a really awesome point, which is this idea that within the boundary of halakha, we can find new answers. And I really, I like, you know, you use the example of the Arabs. That's a great example. I think that's a lot of what modern orthodoxy is. Um, it's not about trying to balance the two, you know, balance Judaism and balance secularism or balance science with Bible. It's not a balancing act. It's about two things kind of working together. Well, right, and the whole point of, of uh, what, what we are called to do by, by God right. is to make the secular holy, to right. make these things right. holy. Right. So we can use that. And I like that using halakha not as a system of rigid rules and right. commandments and right. prohibitions, but as a pathway, right. as a guideline, right. Right. As, as a source of inspiration instead of a source of desperation. And thinking of the Arab as an example, it's, it's a really great thing that here's this barrier, here's this blockade, and are we going to use this sort of Arab mentality, you know, the halakhic mentality to keep people away, to push the boundary? Or do we use it to bring people in and help them stay in and help them get where they need to go? Right. So that's what I think is important when you think about halakhic principles, which is, am I using this halakha to draw close. draw close and to keep people together in one place and it, as a way of unifying? Or am I doing it so that I can keep others out and sort of, you know, shake my fist you at You're not uh, being, yeah. Exactly. You're being a That's the difference. Right? That's the difference. And uh, well, Hava... Well, Paige says, you know, a good leader makes everyone have a sense of authority. And yeah. that is absolutely the case. Yeah, that's very Because a, a good leader who does that doesn't have an ego. Right. Doesn't have an ulterior motive. Right. And instead of making people do things... Right makes them stand on their own feet right. and be adults. Absolutely. And that's what Judaism is, a religion of responsible adults. That's right. what it needs to be. That's right. what we're called to be to the world, right. to, to bring these ideas and stand up right. and not be carried. Right. right. So that's a good point, Paige. Right. And, cool. um, and Hava makes a, an issue here about... Uh, Let's see, I'm, I'm totally in the latter camp on that issue. I just get tired of playing the who's a better Jew game when people disagree with the outcome of my thought process. Yeah, and, and that's a really good question too. You know, if you're going to make a statement, like we make statements all the time about, hey, maybe how we feel about something or something like that, it needs to be looked at from that perspective and not looked at from a character assassination right. type of perspective. Like, right. if you don't keep kosher at home, you still may have a very valid opinion about not driving on Shabbat or right. or whatever. Right. And you can't play the, well, well you don't keep you, kosher, so you obviously don't know you, what you're yeah, talking about. Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. So I think that's, uh, you know, uh, Paige makes a point. If you know your job, then you have less to question. I'd be curious. Uh, to know more about yeah. what that thought is. You know is. what I want to say to, to Chava is, 
even in the Talmud. Right. Nobody agrees with everybody. Yeah. Everybody argues. Yeah. That's the thing. Patrick and I, we have different opinions all the time. Right. Well, most of the time. Some of the most time. Most of the time. Some of the time. <laughs> some of the time. Um, and that's fine. We don't do the same thing, and I would not expect us to. Right. I don't right. expect that to happen to anybody. Right. In the Talmud, we have Rabbi A says this, Rabbi B says this. Who's right? Maybe A. Right. Maybe B. Most right. people think A. Someday, and it says this in the Talmud too, someday, maybe somebody will think B is right, and the majority will think B is right. So then we'll follow B. Right. And then just in case, we'll right. throw Rabbi C's opinion in there because you never know what's going to happen. Right. Right. So even in one of the, the, in the, found, one of the founding texts, textual ideas of what creates Judaism, there is disagreement, argument, sometimes violent, unfortunately, but yeah. you can dissent from each other and right. still be a good Jew because that makes you a good Jew. Question authority. Right. right. Don't follow. Right. Be like Abraham Avinu. Be like Abraham. Right. Right. And question and smash them idols. Right. And there's a, there's a quote from a physicist once I thought was really good, which is, don't worry about having the answer. Be a part of the mystery. Yeah. And that's, I think, a really sort of positive, cool thing. I mean, I couldn't agree more with that. So that's very awesome. Well, very cool. Yeah. Well, I hope everyone uh, is enjoying this. Paige says, yes, I agree to question authority. I love being a part of the mystery. Nice quote. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, so this is awesome, awesome stuff. Um, so I want to encourage everyone, if you're um, not uh, on our Facebook, to please uh, join that. You're going to get lots of cool resources and stuff. Uh, do you do this every day? So cool. Uh, Paige, we're actually working on doing it three times a week. As of now, maybe of, it might become a daily thing. We, we'll see. We'd like to. Um, spread Monday, the word. Yeah, Monday, Wednesday, know. Friday. Yeah. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 2 o'clock Eastern. So. Yeah, definitely. Shemesh says the halakhic system allows for different opinions, but in order to really be a part of the process, one needs to respect the outcome of the process. That's true. That's and very, I completely yeah. agree. And right. the outcome of the process is there's so many different outcomes right right that eventually it comes down to following the majority right right so if you consider the outcome of the process to be the process of itself which is questioning and discussion and right. making i think the important thing is to make an informed decision right. right don't just say things or do things just because someone else said right it's what's supposed to be done right get in there get your hands dirty Right. Pull your pants up, you know. Yeah. Be a big big boy or a big girl and get in there and fight the fight and figure out what's going on. Yeah. And, and Paige, make an informed yeah. decision. Paige says it's more about the process to her. So, uh, you know, I, I think I agree with both sides that it's really, I, I appreciate the process and I appreciate the history of people trying to put this together. Right. Uh, Douglas says, uh, I work a night shift and I'm just getting up when you do this. Should I do the morning service while you guys do Mincha? Personally, I think the Torah is a record that's, of an ancient... Oh, that's Hava. I'm sorry. <laughs> They're both green, so it was hard for me to say. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, Douglas, that's a good question. Um, you know, what I, I guess the question I would ask is what time of day is it? And then it would be appropriate to whatever that, right. that time I would of day go is. With, I would go with that. If it's time for Mincha, I would do Mincha. Right. If you can, when you get home from work in the morning, if it's after sunrise, do shachari before you go to bed. I right. mean, I used to work third shift, and that, that was what I would have to do. The other thing is these um, videos, I'm gonna, we're going to try to put them up on YouTube. So if that works out, then you can, you know, do this yeah. when you're ready or do yeah. it, you know, when you wake up. Find, but, yeah, find that video for that appropriate time right. and uh, you know, I, w I would do what's called for time wise and if you can't do that you know. yeah. and Shemesh says the prayer you guys did seems to be good anytime well yeah there you really go. All, awesome what yeah. we did really was the uh, the, uh, the right. bless the prayer the praise the verses of praise and then we did a Kaddish right. not even not a mourner's Kaddish just right. a, a sanctifying Kaddish. Kaddish and then the Amidah which has to be done three times a day anyway right. so you know and so, you know, that's another thing, too. Uh, I'm just thinking off the top of my head. If you 
don't I mean obviously we we would love you to you know st be streaming with us when we when we do this and be a part of this but let's say um, you know it's if the timing doesn't work out or something like that you know Shaman Amida print a little you know thing on an index card yeah. and keep it with you and you know when the time works you've got that 10 minute break at work or you you know whatever um, you know just go for it it's yeah. right there so. make make the um make the process your own yeah yeah totally. and make it do what you're supposed to do which is amida and shema twice a day right amida three times a day and do right. it how you can do it right absolutely and i mean shemesh is in israel so we i mean that that seals the deal for me right there I you know they said that. that he said he said that you know yeah that we could yeah. you know that it was appropriate so you know a person who makes aliyah i mean you can't you know you can't fight that um, so that's awesome. That's awesome. And uh, yeah. So um, I guess you know maybe we should start wrapping this up a little bit. Yeah. Um, has, uh, has has everybody been here since the beginning? Is there anybody that wants us to go through mincha again? We will be glad to do that. It only takes three minutes. You can, uh, if you would like, just let us know on the the chat window. Say yes or no. <laughs> right. and if there's anybody that wants us to, even if. Ten people don't want to do it. We'll be happy to do it again with you. Right. The text is at 3xdaily.org. And you go to daily prayers and you go to uh, Mincha. So. And I'm actually going to type that in. So that everyone knows. That's the website that you go to. Uh, okay. Well, thank you. Hava, Hava. Thank you, Hava. Uh, I'm going to run to my Thank you, so much. We thank hope you to see you again. Yeah. Um, shalom. Need to get ready for work. Okay, Have a good Douglas. Day. Okay, so. Thank you. All right. Have a thank good you day very work. much. You as well. You will. Yes, absolutely. I Shemesh. hope so too. Yeah. As soon as we're up, we'll be here. Page. Page. Okay, okay, great. Page. We'll okay. Do it again. Great. Yeah. Cool. Because uh, I know there's also some people that are watching that aren't part of the conversation. We can tell that there's uh, there's it's more people. 11, there's about 11 other people out there. Yeah, so. Um, oh, shalom. Shalom. Oh, we've got somebody. Yeah, so if anyone is watching this and wants to interact in the chat thing, let's let's do this because there's obviously people watching. Mm -hmm. What you need to do is you need to log. Oh, oh thank you, Shemesh. That means a Appreciate lot. Appreciate it. Thank you, man. Rock on. Yes, sir. Cool. Um, so if you want to be a part of the chat conversation, what you have to do is um, you have to create an account. You have to log in. Um, so that will allow you to have this the sort of chat. We do have Facebook open right now. So if you want to send a Facebook chat message to Punk Torah Torah, that's our sort of uh, identity on uh, Facebook. You can do that as well if you want to be engaged in this conversation. But um, just for future knowledge, if you want to be a part of the conversation, then you need to create a Ustream account but I think that we have enough people watching we've got like 10 people or so that uh, you know we should probably uh, run through me again do we have anybody on Facebook that's uh, saying anything videos. okay all right so okay so let's do that then let's go on ahead and we'll run we're through down to, we're down to 10 dedicated viewers but there may be more right. people in each room there's two of us that count as one I don't even think we're on there. We don't even count on there. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Armistice David Stanton. Oh, awesome. Hey, David. How's yeah. it going, man? Good to see you. It's so awesome to, to see all these people that we know and yeah, that we talk to all the time. Thank you for coming to Shul. <laughs> Thanks for coming to Shul. This Shul stays open all night. Yeah. So anybody... Uh, Awesome. Anybody who doesn't hasn't been here. Shemesh is Stephen. Okay, awesome. Nice to meet you, Stephen. This is Patrick. Yep, Patrick. I'm Michael. Michael. And uh, we're gonna get back on to Mincha again. Awesome. So I'll scoot over face, here yeah. so it's a little bit better. You okay, so we're about to do Mincha. If you want, go on 3xdaily.org. That's where the text is going to be for this. Right. If you have um, the Indi Yeshiva Pocket Sidur. Page 21. It's page 21 in that. Um, so we'll and give you a moment if you want to pull that up. Yeah, I'll give you a sec. Or if you have your own Sidur and you want to kind of do it your own way, that's fine too. Or yeah. if you just want to listen. Um, yeah. Whatever. Whatever if you're you into. If you listen, that's participating, so that counts. So, you know. Shemesh is Dave. Bye, Dave. Oh, okay. Shalom. Bye, Dave. Awesome. 
Awesome. Okay, so if everybody's ready, yep. we'll start. Okay. We'll get started. <clears throat> a song before the verses of praise, a song for the dedication of your people. I praise you, El Shaddai, God Almighty, for lifting me up above my enemies. Adonai Rapha, the Lord that heals, I call to you, and you healed me. You kept my soul from destruction and preserved me from darkness. Sing to the King of Kings and praise the name. Your anger is brief, but your love lasts forever. The night may bring weeping, but the dawn will bring peace. When everything was good in my life, I felt strong because you made me strong. But when I couldn't feel you, I was terrified. I pleaded with the Lord, what good would my death be? How can I honor and praise you if I am dead? Be compassionate to me and help me. You turn my sadness into dancing. You have taken away my darkness and dressed me in light, so that my soul will praise you eternally. I deny I will praise you forever. Amen. May your name be great and holy in the world which you have made in your way. May the presence of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the Holy One, blessed is He, be over you in your life and the lifetime of your people. Amen. Amen. May I deny the Lord be blessed, be blessed forever. forever. The greatness of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the Holy One, blessed is He, is beyond all words. Amen. Blessed is Adonai the Lord. Amen. For those who choose to be chosen, for students and teachers of Torah, here or anywhere, may we all have blessings. Amen. Amen. May we all have peace and life. Amen. Amen. I am grateful to you, protector of all, our God and God of our ancestors. Elohe Abraham, Elohe Sarah, Elohe Yitzhak, Elohe Rivka, Elohe Yaakov, Elohe Leah, Elohe Rachel. Adon Allah, master of the world who created goodness, who inspires us to repair the world in compassion, king, queen, savior, and shield. Blessed are you, shield of the patriarchs, shield of the matriarchs, and of us all. Adon Allah, master of the world, give us knowledge. After giving us knowledge, accept our repentance. After accepting our repentance, forgive us our shortcomings. After forgiving us our shortcomings, redeem us. After redeeming us, heal us. After healing us, bless our lives. After blessing our lives, bring us together. After bringing us together, judge us fairly. After judging us fairly, defeat the evil in us. After defeating our evil, strengthen our inclination to do good. Now that we are holy before you, make the earth heavenly for us. Hear our prayers and make us worthy of your goodness. Baruch atah Adonai ha'el ha'kadosh. Blessed are you, Lord our God, the Holy God. Baruch atah Adonai ha'el ha'kadosh. Blessed are you, Lord our God, the Holy God. Amen. Baruch atah Adonai ha'osei ha'shalom. Blessed are you, Lord our God, who makes peace. Baruch atah Adonai ha'osei ha'shalom. Blessed are you, Lord our God, who makes peace. Baruch atah Adonai shomei ha'tefillah. Blessed are you, Lord our God, who hears our prayer. Baruch atah Adonai. <clears throat> Blessed are you, Lord our God, who hears our prayer. Amen. Amen. So, Paige asks, do you sing the prayers? So, there's a lot of different ways that you could pray. This one particular method that we're using now uh, comes from the Indi Yeshiva Pocket Siddur, so it's going to be an English poetic translation. Right. But there's lots of different ways you can do it. Uh, I am new to your modern orthodox. <laughs> That's interesting. We never thought of ourselves yeah. that way. Flexodox. Flexodox, I think, is more the term. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I don't really want to be. Right. I don't. Neither of us identify with a, a particular sort of, uh, you know, movement. Yeah. I think. Oh uh, yeah, Hava's like yeah. Oh no no no, it's <laughs> fine, Paige. Don't worry about. It. There's nothing we to know apologize what you're about. Yeah yeah. Um, and you know what? Punkadox. Punk yeah, oh, that's, a good that's one. awesome. So now from now on, it's, now it's Punkadox. Punk I like that. Yeah. I like that. I think I've ever, I mean, as an organization, um, we are unaffiliated. Right. And I think that puts off some people, but we don't want to be pigeonholed. We don't think that that's, you know, I mean, I, we understand labels are necessary, but yeah. in this case, we, we are asking people from every right place right. on the spectrum to, to get involved right. because there's there's right. a place for all of us together we're all you know different um different shades of color in the spectrum yeah you know and the torah is the prism right you know it's like some cool pink floyd right. stuff right. you know? right. and you can't have you can't have the whole white light without all the different colors of the rainbow right right, right. So like it's like that you know that's what we're trying to be so but personally Right. I find the term flexidoxy yeah. or flexidox to be pretty, pretty, you know, appropriate. Right. 
you, you say one thing, if you're the liberal, secular, Hasidodox. I like that. That's, that's good. That's good. Uh, Restructiforming, conservadox, that's another uh -huh. one I've heard. Um, reformative was reformative. one that someone said to me the other day. I like reverend reform. That's reverend good reform, too. that's cool. Um, what was I going to say here? He's whipping out the books. Yeah. Uh, we'll keep talking. I'll yeah, okay. Well, I, you know, I'm hoping that everyone's enjoying this. Um, just to recap, um, you're watching Punctora Ustream live um, afternoon prayer service. Plastic um, orthoprax. <laughs> orthoprax, <laughs> interesting. Yeah. Um, so, you know, this is something we're hopefully going to do three days a week. It may grow even further. The trick to it growing, if you want to see this, if this is something that you're into, you like what we're doing here with this Ustream thing, uh, like uh, I mentioned earlier, you know, this is something that we just did on the fly. Uh, Hava's like, donate. Oh, that's that, actually, that, that does help. That, that actually will help keep it going. Thank you. Thank you. That does help. And if you are interested in doing that, um, I'll, I'll put in the email address for yeah. donations. But what I was really going to say is just, you know, get involved. Um, yeah. We, we welcome submissions to the site from everyone. We... Uh, Oh, sweet. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, we're working on that with you. And uh, we, yeah, we're going to have a meeting in a little bit to talk about it. So if you're going to be online, uh, we're working on a high holidays project. I should say what, what this is. We're working on a high holidays project. A little bit uh, top secret right now. Yeah. Uh, can't see any of the URLs you post. I don't know. Oh, really? Huh, oh, that's okay, strange. Okay. We'll have to check that out. Okay, that's um, strange. But if you want to send a donation you can go to paypal and send it to punctora at gmail.com one word punctora at gmail.com yeah so um let me oh yeah i was just going to say if you if you want to see particularly this Ustream thing happen uh just log on and tell us you know go on the facebook or email us and say you know what here's a time that works for me or whatever yeah and uh, let us know we so we can kind of coordinate this and and, and tell your friends yeah tell please. your friends let them yeah. know awesome uh, oh please send it to uh michael at punctor.org send it to punctora at punctor.org and anything you would want to contribute we'd love to yeah we'll put it accept. up yes yeah so what i want to say please, as a ahead. statement um, kind of, I think it fits in line with what we do yeah. and the way we okay. approach things. Sure. Uh, it's by, uh, there's a commentary by Rashi. Okay. And he says, <clears throat> In everything that one might study of non spiritual matters, there can be nothing new about it. One will then only be exploring and discovering that which already existed from the time of the creation of the world. But in studying Torah, one will always be discovering new meanings, as is taught in the Talmud. It is written in Proverbs 5.19, her breasts will satisfy you each time. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. 11. This means that just like a suckling child will find fresh flavor each time the child nurses at the breast, so too will one who pours over the teachings of the Torah always discover fresh meanings. Very cool. So that's what, yeah. that's what we're here. That's do. awesome. New meanings. <laughs> To find new meaning, it's not the not the other part. Yeah, not the, the other part. <laughs> <laughs> the metaphor I got right. lost right about right, Okay, there. okay. But you know what it's saying. It's saying yeah, if you're yeah. studying sciences, you're going to study something that's been the same since it's been created. Yeah. But the Torah never ends. Right. There's always something new to see. Right. Right. So yeah. Torah, Torah nourishment. Yeah. Paige, you got it. That's totally right. right. It's your Torah lunch time. Torah, Torah lunch. <laughs> there you go. Your your edible Torah. That's right. So. We uh, we'll be signing off. Yep. In a minute. Um, no, no metaphor that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, if it wasn't accurate, Rashi wouldn't have said it. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> if it was offensive, Rashi would have said it. That's true. So, very cool. Yeah, Rashi was pretty punk. I mean, to mention you know breasts and the the Talmud. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I like that. That's awesome. Um, okay, great. Well, you know, like like Michael said. Um, you know, Michael at punctora.org. Uh, please, 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 please send us an email. Uh, if you've got, you know, any kind of blogging that you do, if you make videos, if you're an artist, or if you just have a comment like, I love you, or I hate you, or whatever you want to say, or I somewhere have, in the I middle. I have no feeling about you at all. Yeah, um, send <laughs> us that. And also, we do, we are a nonprofit organization. We uh, rely entirely on small 
donations from people. Uh, PayPal is the easiest way to do it, punktora at gmail.com. Uh, we would appreciate that support. Sure. And uh, let everyone know about what we're doing. And uh, we're doing it so that we can be with you. That's right. So, so we have a community. Yeah, this is, your, this is your community. Welcome home. Right. And Chava, I'm very glad yeah. that, that you brought a little light into our lives as well. So, Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, that'd be great. Yeah, we'd love we'd love anybody. We'd love non-Jews. We'd love yeah. everybody. You know, yeah. we're talking in. about we're actually secret project number two. Yeah, we're working on some um, top secret uh, yeah. conversion, conversion according stuff. to according to the Talmud and yeah. what that constitutes. Awesome. Um, so you know, halakhically. Yeah, so we'll we'll uh, keep you all updated. But yeah, everybody, you don't have to. You don't have to be Jewish. You don't have to be any God. You don't have to be anything. Just yeah, to to the Torah is here for everyone. I mean, we had a cat davening with us apparently, exactly. so it's like Hana, why not? Right? Yeah, Hana, Hana, yeah. Hana the cat. Hannah. So uh, yeah, <laughs> Hannah, Hannah. <laughs> um, yeah. Yes. So uh, anyway. Now I forgot how to say cat in Hebrew. But oh. That's okay. Oh well. <laughs> anyway, uh, thanks everybody for yeah. for participating. It means a lot. We'll be back uh, Friday. Um, Friday at around two ish, two yeah. ish, two ish Eastern. Uh, Hatul. Hatul. Yes, Hatul. Okay. yes. Thank Hatul. you. Thank you. Awesome. Yes. Now we <laughs> now we know how now to I say cat, cat that, I, that I had on the Rosetta morning. Stone yeah. thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, we'll be back at yeah. two o'clock ish on Friday. Right now we're at Patrick's house. Friday yeah. we'll be at at my house. Yep. And um, who knows? We might have a three-year-old guest running around. <laughs> maybe, maybe. But we'll see. But thank you, everybody. Uh, it's been great and very meaningful. Thank so, you. Yeah, shalom, shalom. Shalom. Peace. Yeah. And Yashar Uh Eastern. Oh, Eastern, Eastern. Eastern. Eastern time. Yes, yeah, sorry. Eastern time. <laughs> yeah. Around 2, 2.30 is Eastern time. But here's the here's the important thing. Facebook and right. the website. Facebook and Twitter That'll the website. That'll have the time. You, that'll have the time. We're on. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll put an announcement before we start everything. Yeah. So. Okay. Anyway. Awesome. So now we do need to go. Okay. Shalom, Shalom y'all.